What's going on, bottom line viewers? It's Mitch back here with another video. In this video, I had the opportunity to play NFL Redskins running back Darius Geis in a game of Madden 19. He was offering to his Instagram followers out there a game of Madden for a minimum of $100 a bet on the line me versus Darius guys we made it happen $200 on this game of Madden could I beat Darius guys or was I going to have to cough up $200 either way it was a great time myself versus Darius guys in a game of Madden check it out I'm gonna give you my commentary my thoughts on the game leave your comments below your thoughts on the game like the video, Gronk Spike the like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Me versus Darius Geis. Let's get into it. First things first, we have to start off with Geis' choice of team. He chooses the Kansas City Chiefs, bro. You choosing the Kansas City Chiefs over your Redskins? I don't know about that. I went with the Patriots. We'll see how this game goes. Patriots versus Chiefs, AFC Championship rematch. I'm looking forward to seeing Darius back on the football field this year after getting injured versus my Patriots in a preseason game. I think he's going to tear it up in year number two. It's going to be very interesting to see the running game for the Washington Redskins this year. I think it could be pretty good. Let's get into it. The Patriots versus the Chiefs. Me versus Geis. So basically, I want to start the game off. I want to feel out what he's going to do on the opposite side because I've never played him, obviously. And it's kind of like playing a ranked game or a random opponent online. So I'm just going to start off with a run play. He comes out in a nickel 3-3-5 set. So I'm thinking, okay, I could probably run the ball. He ends up pinching his D-line. I got Patterson at running back, and he shuts down the stretch play there, his corner making the tackle. Only two-yard gain on the first play of the game. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe maybe he's got this defense going. He can stop the run out of it. So the second play, he's again in the 3-3-5. And I throw a terrible interception right off the bat. So things don't start off well for me here. I'm looking for the corner route to Edelman. I got it designed. I probably should have waited it out there, but I didn't wait it out. His linebacker gets a crazy backwards animation tipping the ball out of the air, and it's able to deflect it and get the interception. So, man, I was looking for number 11. I was looking for Jules. He was coming open. And I wasn't able to deliver it there. So on defense, I start off in the dime package. It's one of my favorites in Madden. I just wanted to see what he was going to do. Because he's the Chiefs, I thought he may be a passer. So I come out in the dime. He ends up running inside zone for 10 yards. And I'm like, okay, if he wants to run the ball with Damian Williams, I'll kind of let him run the ball with Damian Williams. But then he ends up running it for another first down. And I'm like, okay, maybe the Chiefs O-line is a little bit better than I give it credit for. Maybe the Patriots D-line isn't going to really make the plays. A lot of times in Madden, especially in like a set like Dime, if you have a good defensive line, then they can kind of make it up for you, especially on all Madden. But then I go into the 4-3 set. I'm going to send a blitz at him here. I th I'm thinking, is he going to run it again? You know, I, I don't really know. So I'm feeling him out. He passes it to the running back. So he's getting Williams involved here. I feel like this running back connection here. He's, he's just trying to get his running backs involved. So I stay with the same play. He goes to the hurry up. He's a big hurry up guy. I noticed that very quickly on in the game. And Williams gets stuffed. So 4-3 over. Doing a pretty good job against the run. We have third and nine. Three minutes. 28 seconds left in the first quarter. He comes out in a three receiver set. I go to the nickel two, four, five. One of my favorite coverages is cover three cloud. I come out in that in the red zone here. I'm thinking, okay, I don't want Mahomes to scramble outside. So I got the contains and the spy out there. I'm going to use her with my backer. He throws it to the sidelines and I get a stop. Jason McCourty comes up with the tackle. So it's fourth and eight and it's going to be a field goal for Geis. I'm thinking he might go for it here because, hey, why not? He did so well against me on the first drive on defense. Maybe he'll just go for it on fourth and eight. But it's tough to convert in the red zone. So he kicks it with Butker. He gets it. And with three minutes remaining in the first quarter, things are looking a little bit shaky for me. But I was glad that I was still able to only allow three points there. My red zone defense overall is one of the strengths of my Madden game. So I was able to keep him out of the end zone. So now 
I get the kickoff back. Two minutes, 57 seconds left in the first quarter. And I'm thinking, okay, what do I have to do? I remember on the first drive, he came out in nickel 335, Tampa 2, two plays in a row. And I saw that on the second play, but I just was too impatient. So I immediately try and go for the big play, as any idiot playing Madden would do. So I'm looking for the vertical down the seam to try and open up those safeties. I have Patterson open, but he drops the ball. I probably could have went to Gordon on the on circle there on the outside, maybe, if, if he was in a... I didn't see if he was in a hard flat or not on the outsides where the guys play up close to the line, but I was able to try and make that pass. It just didn't work out. So now I'm kind of searching through the playbook. Okay, what's a cover two beater? Cover two beater. He's staying in the same defense. So I know, okay, post is a cover two beater. Let's go to the post. So I get that play action off. His blitz doesn't come in. I hit Jules this time over the middle for a huge gain, 29 yards and a first down by the Patriots against the Chiefs. And this is a little bit more like it. This is a little bit more Patriot versus Chief like here. So it's still 3 0, 239 left. First and 10 on his side of the field. And now he's coming out in a totally different type of defense. He's putting everybody at the line. I'm thinking it's probably a blitz. So I keep audibling, audibling until I find something I like. I like that quick post against the blitz. I block it up. I get it to Josh Gordon and I get a first down. So first down, Patriots. Two minutes and is running down on the first quarter first down at his 34 yard line he came out in a blitz so now he's shown me two different looks if one of it's a one of them's a blitz one of them's a cover two okay now he's back in the cover two defense i don't know if it's cover two if he's doing the same thing or not but he seems to be crowding everybody at the line so i was gonna audible to a run here but i decided not to because of that look and that look kind of scared me away i saw nobody was on the right flat so I put Gronk in a little zig route there and get it to him quickly. I might have been able to wait that out for the streak down the right sideline to Gordon, but I just went with the quick look because at this point, I'm still a little bit nervous. I don't know how good this guy is. I don't know how, you know, what to really do against him because I've never played him before. On this play, it's very interesting because he kind of leaves Gordon wide open. I don't know if he does this on purpose, but I've seen this many times in Madden where that doesn't seem to work. Like if you try and throw it quickly to the left side the game still somehow screws you over and ends up intercepting the ball so I just went with a run play I thought I could run for a couple yards here in the red zone maybe I should have went for it but I, again I was playing a little bit conservative here I am down early and I had a pretty bad first series so I'm just trying to do the th uh, do the right thing and not throw an interception or make a bad play so he comes out and cover two again and nobody is open but I missed James White out of the backfield initially so I didn't think that he was going to be open there was James White coming out of the backfield on the wheel route and there was a hard flat he had there but I didn't see that and I end up missing him in the back of the end zone I thought he might have gotten his feet down but he doesn't so now it's third and eight and he's back in that blitz package so I'm thinking okay this is man coverage I need to go to something quick really fast in Tom Brady like fashion so I put Gordon on a slant. I have Edelman on the crossing route and a couple crossing routes over the middle with Gronk. And I go to the slant right away to Josh Gordon and I get the first down. I was happy about that. That was a big conversion, even though, you know, I could still get a field goal here. But I still think that this was a big conversion just because it, it allowed me to gain some confidence against that defense because I don't really know, you know, what it's like or what it's going to be like. So... First and goal, I'm thinking, okay, let's run the ball. He's in this nickel package, and uh, he makes a nice play here with his user and gets it done against Sony Michelle. I figured to put Sony in there because they usually have James White in, in the shotgun package. He didn't get it done on the first run, James White, so I put in Michelle. Now Patterson's in. I'm going to try another run with Patterson. I see a little bit of room to the left, and I'm figuring if I can get a block from my tackle, I can get a few yards here. And that doesn't happen. Patterson is stuffed. I try and hit that hole. It's not open. And his D-line is doing a really good job. So it's third and goal on the seven. A very difficult place to convert for a touchdown here. So with time ticking down in the first quarter, I'm just looking for a play to hit over the middle. I could have maybe went to Gronk there. I could have maybe thrown it to square. I didn't want to make a crazy interception so I end up throwing it high where only Gronk can get it he's not able to come down with it sometimes he does 
and I end up kicking the field goal two seconds left in the first quarter. So the game's tied after the first quarter, three to three. Very close game, very kind of conservative game played by both sides. I was able to move the ball a little bit, and keep in mind on that first drive, I still haven't seen what his offense is all about. I haven't really seen what he's going to come out in. So I've seen him run the ball a couple times and throw a flat pass to his running back. I don't really know what his, run, what his offense is about. So it's 3-3, five minutes in the second quarter, the start of the second quarter. He comes out in three receivers. At this point, in terms of my defense, I'm just starting to read like what formations he's coming out in. So three receivers. I did not expect the five wide. But anyways, I'm out there in a dime, and I'm sending a blitz. I'm thinking he might want to scramble outside the pocket. So I send a blitz at him. I do end up getting him, but he does get a gain of two on a scramble by Mahomes. The hole was open, but my corner blitz got to him there. So second and eight. Mahomes, again in the shotgun, in five wide. He loves the hurry up. I, can, I audible to a cover two with a spy over the middle. I have Flowers spying. There's nobody open. He ends up playmaking the guy down the sidelines, and I get the sack with Dante Hightower. Eventually, my guys come free and get the sack. So looking good on defense right now. I'm feeling some confidence, but he keeps going to the hurry up. So I have to keep making these adjustments. So I was in the cover. I was in the blitz. Then I went to the cover two. Now I'm back in the blitz. And I, I like blitzing on third and long. I just think that's the w way to go in Madden. So basically what happens is I ended up playing my coverage to the sticks, which was a mistake. So that means everybody goes to the first down marker. That was a mistake by me. He ends up making a really nice play with his playmaker, getting his player over the middle for the first down. So a huge conversion for him on the hurry up on third and 17. And then I think I go to a cover three here. Yes, I do. And pressure again by my D-line. Adrian Claiborne playing a little bit of D-tackle in the dime package. Gets some pressure on Mahomes. He ends up stepping up into the pressure, and I get him. But my coverage looks really good. So I'm just trying to switch up a bunch of things, trying to confuse him, trying to do a bunch of different stuff. I put Chung back there. It ends up being more of a cover four because I'm worried about the streak because the Chiefs are really fast. I make the tackle on second 16. He does the same play to Watkins where he kind of he gets that drag and he playmakers him up the field and he hits Watkins for 14 yards. And I need to start to pay attention to that on third down. So that's in the, in the back of my mind. But now it's third and two. Three minutes left in the second. I'm starting to think, okay, I want to get the ball back for my offense at a reasonable time to score. It's third and two. Um, he is in a three receiver set. So I'm going to force him to run the ball. You know, I think I can stop him on third and two in even a package that doesn't really necessarily have a lot of run defenders. So I go back in the dime package and I just press my corners so that they're close to the line so that I can defend that outside run. And he runs it. I do stop him. It ends up being fourth and one. But of course, fourth and one, Madden territory. You're going for it every time. So he hurries up and he goes with the exact same play here. And I go with the exact same defense. I couldn't really audible out of it. I didn't have enough time. And he ends up getting the first down. I was hoping that I could get a similar animation from my D-line. But Williams ends up powering through. So he's hurrying up. He's hurrying up. He's playing with tempo. And I'm continuing to go with it. I'm continuing to change my play. And audible a little bit. I'm using that corner on the right side. He makes a scramble and gets sacked again. So my D-line is coming through. My D-line is coming through big time and making some plays. Overall, I'm just waiting for that interception. I'm waiting for something to happen here. I, I, I'm forcing him to run the ball. Basically, that's what I'm doing. I didn't change my strategy from the first series. If he wants to run the ball versus dime, sometimes I'll stop it, sometimes I won't. But I'm going to let him run the ball. So third and 11. I'm in cover three here, and I choose to be the defensive lineman because I know he want to scramble. So I strip him. I strip the ball. I get that R1 strip button on. I do end up stripping the ball from Patrick Mahomes. I know, I know Patrick Mahomes is not a great scrambler in terms of his carry and just protecting the football. So I press that strip animation. I get it, and then I get the ball back. So now I have – I'm in a pretty good spot here. Two minutes in the second quarter at my own 35. It's third and three. So I have an opportunity to go up here going into halftime. I come out in a tight slot formation. I know he's in man coverage. And I hit that crossing route to Dorsett over the middle for a first down 15 yards up to the 50-yard line. So one minute, 45 seconds left in the second quarter. I'm just looking for plays that I really like in the two-minute situation. 
But I'm also starting to think about, okay, he has the Chiefs. He has Tyreek Hill. He has a quick score offense. I need to be smart with what I do on offense. So what do I do here? So I'm just watching what he does. I audible to the run. It's a really nice halfback base run to the right side. I saw that he pinched his line, so I went with it, and I end up getting 16 yards there. First down, one minute, 20 seconds left in the second quarter, continuing to hurry up to the line. He's in a 3-4 formation. I don't know what the heck he's going to do here. So I run the ball, and I get stuffed. I think that's Alan Bailey, or Chris Jones, I think, who stuffs me there. That was just a crazy animation by Chris Jones. Chris Jones is the beast, by the way, in real life. One minute left in sec in the second quarter. Chris Jones is one of the best defensive players in the league. Uh, so this one, I believe he intercepts me here. I, I might be wrong, but I'm in a great territory, great spot. I still have three timeouts, still 40 seconds. It's second and 12. I have a guy coming open, and I decide to go to square. I don't know why I did that. After the play, immediate, as soon as I threw it, I realized I was an idiot. But I didn't think that Anthony Hitchens was going to be able to make that play. So that's partly on me. That's partly on me underestimating his skills as a defender. Uh, and Geis makes a great play there, man. I got to give him credit for that. That was a, that was a nice interception. I should have went to the R1 on the, on the post. So now I'm in his 3-3-5. I'm giving him sort of his look. But I'm in cover three cloud here. He's looking for the post. Again, he's scrambling. He's just, I'm going to get, I'm allowing him to scramble at this point. 36 seconds left in the second quarter. I'm not spying. I don't care. Just scramble if you want to. I'm not giving up the big play. Even if you get near midfield, I'm confident enough that I can make a stop. So I'm in the same defense here. He's running the same formation, and I just get a really nice animation. I think I might have been in contain there. So he kind of scrambled to the left a little bit, and the, the way the contain is in Madden, sometimes you get these crazy animations. Trey Flowers comes through and gets a sack. So now he's in a really tough spot. He just basically is going to truck this up. But there's 15 seconds left in the second quarter, and he goes and he scrambles again. I, I guess that was a smart scramble because he did end up getting, like, 18 yards. So that was a nice scramble because he has another play to get into field goal range here. But I knew that if he scrambles, he's going to have to call a timeout. I'm not really worried about that. So now I'm just worried about giving up the big play here. So I'm trying to put everybody back deep as much as I can. But he hasn't thrown it deep at all in this game yet. So I, I send a blitz, that corner blitz that I like. And he scrambles to the outside. I'm forcing pressure on him, and Mahomes can't make that throw. So four seconds left in the second quarter. That's pretty much going to end the half here. So at 3-3 three, three and a half, I'm feeling pretty confident. I'm feeling pretty good. You know, $200 on the line. I'm feeling like my defense is doing really well. And he doesn't really have anything going for him. He's trying to pass the ball, even though I'm, I'm in a passing defense the majority of the game. And even when he's running the ball, he's not really getting that running consistency. Um, and the most consistency he's getting is by scrambling with Mahomes. And I'll, I'll let him do that if he wants to, because I know that eventually I'm going to strip the ball from him like I did the first time. So we go into the second half, 3-3, three to three, Chiefs versus Patriots, five minutes remaining in the, in the, uh, in the third quarter. Chiefs versus Patriots. That could be actually the first game of the season this year again. Do you guys want that to be the first game of the season? I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not really feeling that. I'd rather it be the, the Browns. Not the first game, but the first Sunday night game because they changed it because it's Bears versus Packers. So now he gets the ball to start the half. And I'm thinking he's going to come out and run the ball a little bit more. So I come out in the 3-4 package just to see what he does. And I'm planning on sending some pressure here because I know he likes to scramble outside. So I'm keeping him from scramble outside. I'm going to trust my user ability to cover the middle of the field. And with all my guys blitzing up the middle, he's not really able to get much going on the run game. So he gets three yards. Again, he goes to hurry up. I didn't realize how much he hurried up until after I watched this. Like, you know, I'm watching this now. But back in the 3-4, he's, he's not letting me switch my defense. In his passing formation, I know he's going to playmaker that running back. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. And he scrambles with Mahomes, and I end up taking him down with Simon. I think he was actually trying to scramble or trying to playmaker one of his receivers, but the game didn't let him do that, thankfully for me. But because I think somebody would have been open because I was covering the short area of the field. And then on third and one, I thought he was going to run the ball. He doesn't end up running the ball. He throws a pass to the uh, to the right sideline to Tyreek Hill. That could have been completed. It's not completed. And 
fourth and one. Will he go for it is the question. So I'm just waiting to see if he's going to go for it. If I was the Chiefs man, I'd go for it every time. Even if it's fourth and one on the 34-yard line, $200 on the line, I'm going to go for it, man. Four, four minutes, 13 seconds in the third quarter remaining. So still lots of time. And he does end up getting in a offense to go for it. So he's not going to punt it. I'm trying to figure out what defense I want to come out in. And here I'm basically selling out for the, the deep bomb. I press my corners. I got everybody at the line playing hard flats. I'm basically making sure that he doesn't get a yard. And, of course, me worrying about that. You know what ends up happening here? Is I end up switching my defense at the last second. And it ends up costing me. He gets a bomb to Tyreek Hill on 4th and 1 from his own 30-something yard line. And a huge touchdown for him. A huge momentum uh, killer for me. And a huge momentum boost for him. And Tyreek Hill breaks a tackle and scores a touchdown. And you always got to think when you're playing the Chiefs, man. Tyreek Hill's going to kill you. It's just like real life. The Patriots in the AFC Championship, they didn't go one play basically without double teaming Tyreek Hill. I switched to the cover two after the cover three. I, ha I probably should have stayed in the cover three after watching that play. Four minutes remaining in the third quarter. I know I still got lots of time to respond. I was a little bit worried about the red zone, though. I felt like the first time around he had some pretty solid red zone defense, so I'm thinking this is probably going to be a low-scoring game from here on out because I gave up a big play, but I'm not going to do that again. I, I promise you I'm not going to do that again. So, I know he's in man coverage. I see that blitz coming. I'm waiting for a guy to open. Circle is wide open. Circle might be a touchdown on that play. I end up getting sacked. So now I'm thinking second and 20. This isn't looking good. Momentum starting to go his way. I just got to stay with it. So second and 20. He comes out in the same defense. Probably trying to get me on the blitz again. And I know I probably got two options here. I'm probably going to have to go short to that slant. Or I'm going to have to go over to that post. Make him make a decision. He ends up biting on the slant just enough for me to hit that post for the first down to Josh Gordon. So I got first and 10 and moving the chains, gaining a little bit more confidence. I don't know if he even runs that play after I beat him on that first down. I don't know if he goes back to that at all. So back in the bunch here, I get my own big play. He plays his cover two. I dice him up with Philip Dorsett down the right sideline, and Philip Dorsett is too fast. I take it in for the touchdown. Dorsett from Brady, 10-10. And now I'm a little shaky here on the extra point. I remember I was like shaking. I was like, holy crap, that was a huge play. And, you know, sometimes when you're playing, it, I like the extra points are really weird in this game too. So, like, hit that extra point, 10-10. And... Now I'm thinking I need to get a stop. I need to get a big play from my defense. I need to start getting some interceptions. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that many more times in this game. That was my one big play like he had his one big play. I don't think he's going to let that happen again. I, I really hit a huge play on him. So let's come back and play some defense. Now he's coming back in a three receiver set. And I'm going to try and give him a different look. I haven't given him all game. A different blitz. I'm gonna try I'm gonna try and keep that consistency with the corner coming off the edge. So now I'm in three three five nickel odd. And let's see what I can do here. He likes this formation a lot too. So he, he likes the guys coming to the right side and and throwing it on the rollout to the right. So I'm thinking, okay, let's just play pass. He goes with the inside zone. My corner comes in, makes the tackle. Because I had those two guys blitzing there. They're able to make that play. So I'm just continuing to let him get that run. And I use her McCordy here. Looking for him to go for it. And nothing's there. My guys continue to get in just at the right moment. I'm making the right coverage. And he is not able to get the scramble that he wants to. To get the playmaker or whatever he's trying to do there on the right sideline. So now I go back to the cover three cloud. Just in, I think in a different format. This might have been Dime actually. Yeah, Melon Fonwu at, at linebacker, by the way. I'm looking forward to seeing if Melon Fonwu can play for the Patriots this year. So third and nine, this is a big play. I need to get something here. I need to get something. So I use her, my D lineman, 
as a player, but I realize that he has Connolly coming over the middle. Huge conversion for him. He gets into my territory. No rush whatsoever. I was looking for him to scramble. That's why I was the D lineman. It doesn't work. I took a gamble, but it didn't work. So he gets the first down, and he's in my territory. Mahomes from five wide again. He goes back to that five wide. I have contains on him, and I have a spy. So he's rum he's looking for that, but I pick him off with the user. And that's Obi Felon Obi Melon Fonwu, who's just fast enough, man. He's like 90 something speed at like playing him. He's usually a safety, playing him at linebacker in the dime set. And I'm able to run over there because of his speed and make the interception. I kind of baited him into that one, but I wasn't quite sure I was able to get it. It just so happened that I was around there and made the play on the interception. So then I go back to the run game. I get a pretty good carry here from Patterson. We'll see that a little bit later, but Patterson has a nice gain here for a first down. So I'm starting to get some momentum. I'm feeling myself after that interception. I'm feeling that I'm playing really well at this point. I'm getting kind of that user back on defense. And I baited him into an interception, so the confidence is flowing here. He's actually outgaining me right now in yards. It's 10-10. He has over 200 yards. I have 180 yards. Going back to the run game once again, it's open. James White gets about eight yards on the carry. And close to a first down. Chiefs, Patriots. Do you guys think that the Chiefs and Patriots is going to be the next AFC championship as well? Do you think it's going to be a back-to-back -back AFC championship game? So this time, this is a defense I haven't really seen from him, but I want to go to this post out play and it's not cover two or at least it's not looking like cover two so I'm kind of modifying the play to make sure that I'm prepared for multiple different defenses usually in Madden just a Madden tip I like having one half of the field that's good for one side of the, one part of the defense and another half of the field that's good for another type of defense and here, I end up making another stupid decision, another really dumb interception. He's all over Gronk on the slant route. Uh, for some reason, I still throw it. I don't know why. That was probably the worst interception out of any of them. I think I only had two, but that was probably the worst interception of all of them. Again, great user play by him. He was right there to make the play, but I made the wrong decision. I should have went to the post. It might have not have been completion, but I should have at least tried to go to the post. So now I'm back not confident at all so i need my defense to step up again and i should have got an interception there the game basically screws me over jc jackson goes up for the interception and in real life jc jackson has great hands he would have caught that okay he would have caught that he doesn't catch it and i'm still on defense so second and ten i gotta live with it and I got to continue on. I'm going back to my blitz, but I'm modifying the coverage behind it. I realize that he doesn't really go to the sidelines. So I'm just playing the middle of the field. And I get enough pressure there with enough blitzers. I think I sent six. So I end up getting six guys in Trey Flowers, two and a half sacks. I miss you, Trey Flowers, already. Thank you for helping me in this game. But Trey Flowers, you know, he he did well for me in this game now i put him in a spy and i get the contain going because he saw that i was blitzing the first play i'm saying okay i'll give him a different look this time i'll drop people into coverage so i have a spy i have three rushers and usually i don't rush any less than three just because i feel like that's kind of a dick move but this time i get no rush whatsoever my contains just end up stopping and not doing anything and he's just standing in the pocket without any sort of pressure and ends up finding a guy over the top of my linebackers. Which, again, another conservative coverage move by me, and it didn't end up working. So he's in my side of the field, and we go into the fourth quarter where it's not looking so great for me right now. You know, it's 10-10. He definitely looks like he's going to put some points up here, and I'm going to need to respond immediately. And the way that this game's playing, I just, I've thrown two interceptions. Or I've thrown three interceptions. And he hasn't, you know, he hasn't really shown me that I can score on him, to be honest. I've scored one big play. I've scored one drive. I kind of knew in the back of my mind if I got back to a little bit more consistency on offense and just taking it slower, I could score. And that's why I get a little bit aggressive here on defense to try and make a play. So I'm sending a blitz from the left edge. I don't think I really did this before that point. Um, 
from the 4-3. And I'm just making, waiting for him to make the play. He takes it all the way down on the play clock. I'm trying to jump a route here and try and bait him into an interception. The pressure comes through unexpectedly for him, and he throws the ball right out of bounds. He wasn't outside the tackle box, so that's a huge penalty for me. So now I'm thinking, okay, he's at the 41-yard line. I can't give up any yards here, and hopefully he can miss a field goal, or hopefully he's too far out of field goal range. So I, instead of going with the blitz where he could get the ball out quick, I decided to go with a coverage defense. He ends up running the ball, and I get a great stop here. So he only gets two yards on third and 22. So at the 39 yard line, I'm thinking, okay, if I stop him again, I might be able to get a missed field goal or potentially him just not going for the field goal because it's too far. Keeping in mind, he has a pretty good kicker. So, and he, you know, Butker's pretty good. So we'll see if he can do it. So I end up throw, I end up throwing a blitz at him. I say, F it, if I'm going to stop him here, I probably need to get a sack. So I go for an all-out blitz. Basically, I play cover two shell, uh, two safeties deep, two corners on the cloud flat, and I just send everybody at the quarterback. And Mahomes scrambling backwards has to throw it out of bounds. So I'm feeling pretty good here. Okay, so at the very at the very least, he's gonna get a field goal, which is gonna be a tough field goal, or he's going to be he's gonna miss, and I'm gonna get good field position. So four minutes. 15 seconds basically and it looks like it might miss but it ends up going in so it's 13 10 for him i'm feeling fine because i know for sure i can get a field goal on him at this point i am a little bit discouraged because i felt like that could have been a missable missable field goal or i could have got the ball there and had a good opportunity to go down and score with the good field position but anyways I try and make this kick return with Cordell Patterson because I just say F it. And I actually have a hole there, but I end up running into James Devlin, unfortunately. So four, four minutes, 10 seconds, James Devlin stops Cordell Patterson from taking back a touchdown to the house. So now I'm thinking, okay, four minutes, 10 seconds left, 13, 10. I'm trying to think about time management. So do I pass? Do I run? I want to stay very balanced here. So I come out in a two tight end set and I'm gonna run this uh, I'm gonna run the ball and I noticed that he's playing really light up front I actually had an opportunity there to score a touchdown if I would have went to the left a little bit Gronk gets caught up on a block if he would have hit that block I would have definitely got a touchdown or if I would have just taken the route outside of him I might have had an opportunity for a touchdown knowing that Patterson has a lot of speed but there I think he played the pass and I just blew him up and got eight yards on that dive play Again, he goes to the same formation. I want to run the toss, but I see the dives open. So again, I go with the dive. Patterson hits him, you know, with a with a nice run there. And I get up to near my 40-yard line. So I'm saying, okay, if he continues to run this defense, I'm just going to continue to run the ball. Uh, maybe at this point, he's forcing me to run the ball. I don't really know. But I'm under shotgun, or I'm under center. And I'm saying, okay, I have a couple choices here to go for it. I'm thinking, okay, Dorsett over there might be able to get a bomb, but no, I go conservative. I go with a, a die play, and I hit him with it, and I think he switched to the wrong defender, or he just poorly mistimed the tackle, and I get a huge run from Sony Michelle down the left sideline on the one-yard line, so now I'm, I'm thinking, okay, that's a huge run for me. He made a mistake. I need to capitalize here. Three minutes remaining. Do I milk this clock or do I just kind of leave it? So I'm in quarterback sneak. I'm pretty sure I'm going to score based off his formation he's in. So I'm saying, okay, I'll milk it a little bit, but I still know that if he scores, I need to get the ball back to potentially score a touchdown. So I want to leave time for me to get the ball back just in case. So I score. I go up 17-13, 2.49 left in the fourth quarter. Lots of time left for him to score with Patrick Mahomes and his offense that he has. This is coming down to the absolute wire. I hit him with that huge Sony Michelle dive. I think it was a halfback dive. But sometimes halfback dives, man, in this game, they, they're really good. It depends on the formation sometimes, but th that play is really good. So... Two minutes, 49 seconds remaining. I'm thinking about my defense, what I'm going to do on defense. I'm thinking about if I can, you know, what's going to happen? Am I going to win this game? $200 is on the line. So I go down there. Duke Dawson makes a tackle. 
and he gets the ball back. So now, again, I'm saying to myself, oh, I go to the adjustments first. I put my D-line on aggressive, and the other thing I do is I put Gilmore on Hill. So I play my corners by overall. I don't usually typically do that, but because I was playing Tyreek Hill and because I have Stephon Gilmore, I figured why not? And he hasn't really thrown a lot of deep passes, so I'm just going to, you know, Gilmore can lock down Hill in the short area of the field in zone coverage, so I'll let him do that. Um, here I'm in a 3-4, and I'm trying to send a blitz, I believe, off the left edge. I don't think it even comes through, but it's just the, the pressure that's coming, so he has to deliver the ball out of his hand quickly. He finds where I wasn't because I was trying to use her the middle of the field, but also use her the running back. So I initially use her the running back, take the running back away, but then he sees that I move off of him. He makes the right read and he goes to it, which was the right read. And at the 43-yard line, my 43-yard line already, he's looking pretty good here. He's scrambling outside the pocket, he, and he throws it out of bounds. He knows that that based off that last interception that I made, that he that I can play that I can use her and make the interception on that sideline so he doesn't throw that ball. And he's just looking for a big play, I think. He's trying to make a big play happen, and I'm just not willing to give up a big play. I'm trying to send some pressure on second down and 10. I think, you know, you got to be wise when you're playing Madden uh, to balance out how much pressure you bring with how much coverage you play to try and confuse your opponent. Here he does have that circle option open uh, on the Seattle play or on the Pats Verts play, but I end up getting the blitz coming through and sacking him. He didn't block his running back, so I was able to get the, the pressure through and Hightower comes through with the sack. But he did have circle open. I could have played it with the safety, but I didn't. Now on third and 18, as you guys see, I blitz absolutely everybody except for the four people back because I'm just saying, okay, those four people are going to play the sticks. They're going to make the tackle, and I'm going to get as much pressure as I possibly can at the quarterback. This is something that I do actually quite frequently, quite frequently because in Madden, like you used to be able to in Madden, like send like three guys, and sometimes you would get at the quarterback. But nowadays, man, it's just about sending a lot of people, to be honest. If you really want to make sure you get pressure, and I'm no expert or no pro in Madden, but like that's, that's pretty much what I do because I just figure on all Madden especially – that's the only way to get decent pressure. I get enough pressure there to cause an aired throw. He's sending everyone down the field as I, as I thought. And I come over there with 95 speed Jonathan Jones, come out of absolutely nowhere and pick the ball off. I wasn't sure if it was an interception, but it was a toe tap interception. I'm feeling really good right now. Obviously, I'm on my way to win. I was absolutely jacked that I got that pick. I was like fist pumping in the air. I was going nuts. So Jonathan Jones gets the interception. And now I'm just going to run the ball. I'm going to run the ball until he can stop me. If he really gets in a terrible defense where I can pass the ball, I'll pass it. But I'm going to run the ball. So I'm just motioning Gordon around just to see what his defense is like and what he's in. And he doesn't end up going with Gordon there. So I run the toss to the left and I get a big gain by Cordero Patterson for a first down. But he does go out of bounds, which is big. But I am in his side of the field. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay... Even if I get stopped, if I get a field goal, I'll feel happy about that. So I go in the same formation just because I, I figured it worked the first time, so why not? Uh, now I see that maybe I'll run the toss, maybe I'll run a dive play. I'm basically going through the dive or the toss. Here, I kind of wish I could audible and just pass the ball to that dude, but you can't in Madden, so that kind of sucks. But I run, I run the dive play, and I get a huge gain again to Patterson up the middle. He was playing to the left. I audible to the dive. I get it. And he's not really able to play the run. I wish I kind of figured this out at the beginning of the game. But with the Chiefs, I don't think the Chiefs really allow you to stop the run very well. And the Patriots have a great offensive line in this game. As well as a good repertoire. Uh, repertoire? Repertoire? I don't know how to say that word. Uh, a lot of different types of running backs, I should say. So... Now he's doing something crazy. I don't even know what he's trying to do. So I'm saying, okay, I'm going to toss this ball. He, he, maybe he's going to play the run up the middle. I don't care. I'm going to toss the ball. So Sony Michelle, toss outside. And maybe he was hoping I'd go out of bounds. That does not happen. So he calls a timeout. One minute, six seconds left in the fourth quarter. And he, he went back to that mid blitz, but it didn't work. Maybe he was trying to take away the dive and play the 
play the toss, but it didn't end up working. So here, he finally goes to like a big heavy set. I think this is a 4-6 or some sort of 46 defense. He pinches the line. I initially come out in a power O, and I see that whenever you see that kind of hole there, I always run the power O, and I get it to work, and I basically win the game off that run. Seeing that hole, the Madden recognition. You know, as a running back, he probably should have seen that hole open. But I hit him with it, and I get it for a touchdown. So I win the game, 24-13. He ends up quitting at the end, just saying, you know, good game, whatever. I'm not going to come back. And I end up winning $200 against Darius Geis in a great game of Madden. This was an awesome game. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing him. Uh, I'd play him again. If double or nothing, Darius Geis, if you're out there, let me know, bro. Hit me up. I'll play a double or nothing. But this was a great game. And, yeah, I enjoyed it. it was, and it, as for this video, it was something different to do. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. If you did, Gronk spike that like button. Subscribe to the Bottom Line View if you haven't already. It's Mitch of the Bottom Line View. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next video. Peace.